it's um, you know it's different. It's, it's not as explosive as the, as the diamond cutter because the diamond cutter came out of nowhere, uh, and he, he doesn't do that with it, which is really the whole you know. That's what makes the move so over. <laughs> it comes out of nowhere. You know, yeah. That's why people love it. People love to be surprised. Yeah. So uh, in this scenario, you know, I think he's doing what he wants to do with it and just altered it and made it his own. But, you know, everybody takes a little twist and tries to make it their own. So that's, that's cool with me. Okay. Well, that's cool. See, I, I, I did not know that. I did not know that at all because I, I just thought because, you know, there's a lot of wrestlers. Even Bubba Ray Dudley at one time, uh, I don't know if he still uses it at all the Cover cutter, so. <laughs> right. Well, at least she gave me props to call it a cutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, with your wrestling career, now, I, I read your biography because I know just about, I know everything there is to know about you, yet you really don't know much about me. Tell me if that sounds weird at all, huh? <laughs> One more. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, read your, I went to Diamond Dallas page. Dot com and I went to your site and uh, read your biography because I knew that you were from Jersey and whatnot. Growing up, was wrestling always something you always wanted to do, or was it some other things you wanted to do? Well, growing up, wrestling was a passion. Being a kid, and I tried it when I was twenty, it didn't work out. Yeah. And uh, you know that stuff gets <laughs> that, that that fake stuff gets real real so <laughs> real fast. Yeah. Uh, and your body can't take the punishment. But I was a kid at the time. I tried it, and it didn't work out. Uh, I was staying in the nightclub business, and I tried it again when I was 31, but not as a wrestler, as a manager. Okay. And uh, ended up getting picked up by the AWA, you know, which based, was based out of Minnesota at the time, and Las Vegas. And uh, I worked in, you know, in the smallest federations for three and a half years while I was still in the nightclub business. And then I finally got my opportunity at Ted Turner's... Uh, uh, TBS in uh, 1990, yeah. and I was 35 and I was 35 years old at the time. Yeah. And uh, I uh, I came in. They brought me as a manager and a color commentator. And five months in, they told me that I was overshadowing the talent. That uh, it wasn't my fault with the long blonde hair, the diamonds, the rap, the club. <laughs> People were paying attention to me and not the wrestler. Yeah. So uh, they basically told me I could still be a color commentator. I was like, you know what? I'm going to become a wrestler. I was 35 and a half years old, and I, I just set my mind to it. I got an audio book coming out, yeah. um, an inspirational audio book, um, December 2nd in Sam's Club. So if you're anywhere near Sam's, go get it, check it out. But it's, it's called Own Your Life. And what I did was applied the same principles when I was 35 and a half to my wrestling career as I did when I did the nightclub business, uh, and it did the 10 different principles from, you know, applying SmackDown, as I call it. Yeah. Uh, and SmackDown as an acronym means specific, yeah. setting goals, specific, measurable, achievable, compatible, and then K, keep it going, and then do it, own it, write it down now. That's what it makes you SmackDown. But that's how I set my goals. And, um, I've got this all on this audio tape, uh, it's virtual tape called Own Your Life. But that's what I did back in 90, when I, 91, when I decided I'm going to become a wrestler. And everyone said I was crazy. They said it couldn't be done. But they were wrong. Yeah. Because if you apply, if you understand what the 10 principles are to owning your life, well, then anything's possible. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, that, that really... Uh a lot of people probably nowadays don't even look at that that way that you look at because you know, uh, when I found out that you did your YRG stuff and, and used that as a way of healing, so to speak, you know, that really, man, I tell you, that's just, just like what you just said earlier about, you know, about owning your life and whatnot. That's, that's amazing. We, like I said before the interview, uh, we do have a Sam's Club, and that's in Grand Forks, North Dakota, so any of you other DDP fans besides myself, Go out there December 2nd, pick it up, because I'm sure uh, DDP would appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, what's really great about it, first of all, I mean, it's, it's you know, anything in Sam's is really cheap. Yeah. So it's a great yeah. price. I mean, it's like, I think it's $13.99, so make a great Christmas gift. Yeah. But also, it's in a box that's 14 by, by 24, and in it is not just this, the, the inspirational audio book. It also has the YRG, Yoga for Regular Guys, warm-up. Um, it was about 20 minutes, a little less, right around there, 20 minutes, just to get yourself, you know, uh, understanding what YRG is, because, 
you know, a lot of people say, God, I can't believe you're doing yoga. I said, well, me either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But, but I don't do yoga. I yeah. do a yoga-based program because YRG is yoga meets old-school calisthenics, push-ups, squats, crunches, done to your ability. You can alter it in any way that makes it more comfortable to you to you know, start to build that strength and conditioning. And so it's yoga meets old school calisthenics meets isometric and isokinetic movement, which means the engaging of muscles as you move them, and you wear a heart monitor. So you can see where your heart rate's at. Now, yeah. what the hell does that mean? Everyone does. When you go to any gym, you're going to see ellipticals, treadmill, stairmaster, bike. Yeah. Every one of those ones, when you get within your fat burning zone, which I'm sure no one in this program knows, so much <laughs> take, take 180, less your age. Today I'm 50. So 50 less 180 is 130. Now drop 20 clicks down to 110. And between 110 and 130 on my heart rate, if you're wearing a heart monitor, I'll know when I'm in my fat burning zone, so I don't have to work too hard. Or if I'm working too easy, I know to step it up. The bottom line is when you're on a Stairmaster, a treadmill, a elliptical, a bike, whatever, the only thing you are doing is burning fat. If you're in your zone, with YRG, you're getting the same cardiovascular workout or better, plus you are creating energy, flexibility, stability, because it's all about building core strength, and most importantly, longevity. It's all about holding back the hands of time. And with my workout, I don't even lift weights anymore. People are going, damn, God, can't. Yeah, first of all, they, they're blown away. They can't believe I'm 50. Yeah. I'm like 38 or 40, which is, yeah, which is complimentary. That's what you look. You actually look like you're still like in your mid-30s or whatnot, yeah. But, but you know what? But I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's because I take care of my body. I put the right foods in my body. And I still like to you know, have a steak and a beer and... You know, I still like to have a good time, but I also know how to moderate my body so I yeah. don't abuse it. And what I do is, because, you know, right now, Frankie, everybody's living to, like, 78, 80, yeah. 85, 88. But if you look at these old people, 99.9% of them not take care of themselves. So for the last 10, 15, 20 years of their life, they're in miserable pain. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> and I got yeah. thrown around like a rag doll. Yeah. I am stronger today than I have ever been. Because, you see, we throw in push-ups in a lot of upper body work into YRG, which makes it totally different than yoga. And you got to understand that I was a guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga yeah. the first 42 years of my life. I just wouldn't be caught dead doing it. But it came as 1990, it was the end of 1998, and I was on top of the world. Yeah. And the doctors, I ruptured my L4 and L5 so badly that I was forced into, you know, into, you know, either trying something new or quitting wrestling. Yeah. And quitting in failure was not an option to me. Yeah. So I, I adapted. My mind had to become flexible before my body could. Three weeks later of doing this stuff called power yoga that I was doing at the time, uh, my body started to get more flexible, started to get stronger. Three months later, I was back in the ring. Yep. Now, here's the real beauty of this whole thing. At 42, they said my wrestling career was over. At 43, <laughs> I was the heavyweight champion in the world. <laughs> so, you can't tell me that adapting to the situation, which is one of the key principles in my 10 principles of how to own your life. You've got to be flexible in the situation. You've got to be adaptable. Yeah. You got. I mean, there's so many great things I talk about in this thing, and I've had some guys who who do this for a living listen to it, and they're like, "Wow, yeah. you've hit on something different. It's a different way to explain it because it's all the same things. Living with a positive attitude, you must believe to achieve. I mean, all those type of things they've been said over and over in 16 different ways on Sunday, but they haven't been said the way I'm saying them right now because there's never been anyone like me who's been an inspirational speaker and a workout guru yeah. who has taken their body and honed their body to be in better shape at 50 than I was at 30. Like <laughs> right now, Frankie, I, I, I do like doing push-ups. We go down, we go down for three seconds, we hold three feet off the ground for three seconds, and then you push up for three seconds, then you come down for three seconds, hold three seconds, then you go through it. Now, if you can't do that 
in a push-up, you're going to be lower to your knees. Yeah. I know you can do it in that spot. Yeah. Then from there, you build to five. You build to ten. You see, that's from the, uh, the, the ultimate warrior workout. Yeah. But for me, I'm past that. So I'm doing one-arm push-ups. <laughs> where I go down for three, hold for three, push up for three, yeah. come down for three, hold three, so I down for three, hold for three, and then go to my movement. I build up to ten second one arm push ups. Huh. <laughs> that, is, that is something. That is, wow. Yeah, and dude, it's, it's, I'm not showing off. I'm telling people what's possible yeah. with this. I don't know many guys that can do one arm push ups.